Last weekend I went to Warhammer Fest and I had a great time. I also got this really cool exclusive Commissar miniature there, which now we are going to paint in the traditional Warhammer style. If you have been following the channel, then you probably know what kind of style I usually paint and that's constantly evolving, but it's definitely not the usual style that you paint Warhammer miniatures with, which is the heavy metal style. But when I was visiting Warhammer Fest, I saw many of these models and I really came to appreciate how cool they actually looked, especially when they were kind of close together, like a whole army. They just looked fantastic. And I was feeling this like nostalgia really creeping up on me because when I started painting, and that was only like three years ago actually, I of course started painting with the heavy metal style because I started collecting Warhammer armies and I wanted to paint them like the box art. Well, you know me, that didn't actually change. So of course the heavy metal style was the box art. So let's go back to my roots a little bit and see if I can do it better than when I started. Let's see if this model actually turns out better than my first couple of tries, which I hope will be the case. And I started out with the zenithal highlights because I wanted to make sure that I have a bright undercoat for all those really dark colors on this dude, because our commissar is not exactly a fan of bright colors, it seems, which probably shouldn't surprise me very much. But at this point I was immediately reminded of my struggles back in the early days when I started painting miniatures of just applying base coats because it's actually much more difficult than it seems um, because at first I definitely had trouble creating an even coat right that covered everything and uh, it was a bit blotchy and patchy and, and, and all that right it just looked quite bad for some reason and um, I guess I got better over time. And I was thinking what kind of advice would I give myself if I had the chance and I guess it would be uh, one, don't thin the paint so much because initially I was told by so many YouTubers, so many people that don't try to use thick paint, right? You are going to clog up the details so I just thin the paint too much and it was like running and like not really going where I wanted and it didn't cover at all. Nowadays I barely add anything to the, the paint when I'm using a base coat. I just leave a little bit of moisture in the brush as I clean it and whatever is coming off of the wet palette and that's basically it. The other advice would be to please do not disturb the paint because I had this tendency that I saw something is not covering perfectly which is normal right you should apply to thin coats well maybe not so thin but you know I saw these these issues there is like this not so perfect patch so I just went back in while it was still wet and then of course then you remove the paint and that layer is never going to look perfect ever again. And the final thing would be the selection of the brush, because as you can see here, this brush is not exactly small compared to the mini itself. Like this is a really tiny miniature. It's a normal human, not a space marine. Uh, and the brush is like one third of the, the, the length of the mini or the, the, how tall the mini is. Uh, I think this was a size one um, out of the brushes that I, I was using. And back in the day, I was using a 0 02 or a 0 03, which was really not a good idea, right? Especially not for base coating. But let's talk about the present a little bit as well, not just uh, imaginary advice to my past self. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm applying all the base coats. And what I actually mean by base coats is all the mid tones. So instead of working your way up from the deepest shadows and go to the highest highlights, you actually start in the middle. Uh, you start with the color that you want the mini to be. So for example, in the case of the coat, you can see that it doesn't have the deepest shadows, it doesn't have the highest highlights, but it has the main color of the coat, the one that I think is going to represent the coat in the end once the model is finished. If you own any Citadel paints, which I suspect most of you do, then you can think about it in terms of base paints, layer paints and shades, right? Because the, the base color, the base paint is your mid-tone. And then the layer paints are your highlights and then the shade applied over the base color is your shadow. At this point I also did something that I'm kind of unsure about because I do this all the time when I paint non-metallics but of course here we are aiming for true metallic colors. And what I did was I just painted everything that was supposed to be metallic black because in my experience at least from the old days when I was using true metallics, uh, true metallic colors look better on black as well. But I might be wrong here because my assumption would be that if I paint, let's say, a gunmetal on white, it would be a bit brighter, but it would still probably cover everything. But you guys can tell me what is your experience. 
is it actually better to paint on black or on white when it comes to true metallics? Once I did that, I also started adding all the different base colors to all the little bits and bobs that this guy has, because of course it's a Warhammer sculpt, it might be tiny, but it has all the little things that you usually have on Warhammer miniatures, the belts, the, the holsters, the little decorations on the armor, or in this case the coat and so forth. So you have to base coat all of them, ideally in the mid-tone. The only tricky part in this is that this dude, this commissar, is mostly wearing different shades of brown, right? So like brownish reds or more greenish browns, but in general, browns. And of course, if you represent all of these in brown colors, then like they have to be different because if they're not, then the whole thing is just going to look like a big blob of brown, which you don't really want, right? So the trick here is that you can use, or you should actually use, different midtones for all of these elements to differentiate them. But then later on you can actually use the same or very similar highlight colors still, because the difference is already established with the midtones. For the metals, I ended up using gunmetal and gold from AK Interactive. And this is interesting because I remember when I started out with this painting style, of course you are trying out different true metallic colors because the different ranges have very different approaches to metallics. Personally, I went through a lot of different paint ranges and metallics. Uh, for example, I started out, I think, with Army Painter and I didn't really have a good experience with those. And then Citadel was pretty cool, Vallejo was fantastic, and now I, I'm having a pretty good experience with AK Interactive as well. For metallics, I think what you're looking for is something that covers really well. Like, if it covers in a single pass, then, then you are golden, especially when you're using a gold color, I guess. But maybe you guys can tell me in the comments below what is your favorite true metallic metal. Maybe there is something that I haven't even tried and that would really blow my mind. And once I applied all the different mid-tones on the mini, it was time for me to do something that I usually don't do and use washes. I went as standard as possible here. I just used non oil on all the steel and then flash shade on all the gold and finally some agrax on all the other stuff. Once again, this brought back memories when I tried this for the first time and I was kind of terrified of just ruining what I already did because usually I spent a lot of time on the base coating, probably like five times as much time as I spend nowadays. And then, of course, applying all these like black shades on it, it looks pretty terrifying. So I just applied very tiny amounts, which of course did nothing other than just like blotch up the model really. So learn from my mistakes, don't use a tiny brush for doing this. Use a big brush, load it well, make sure that you don't flood the whole model, but you like unload enough paint on it so that it actually flows into the crevices and creates the black lining that you are looking for, because otherwise all you do is you just dirty up the model. But at this point I have to admit that I actually cheated a little bit here, because as you can see, I applied the shade on the coat as well, and after it dried, I wasn't very satisfied with it, especially because I looked back at the box art and I realized that there is a really subtle transition from almost black to a lighter shade of brown on the coat. Basically, the, the top half of the coat is almost black and then the bottom half is like a much lighter brown color than the mid-tone. Remember in the beginning of the video I was telling you that these box arts are actually way more subtle than you would think and I fell into the trap of that because I looked at it and I perceived the coat as brown. It's brown leather. But if you look closer, one of the reasons why this model looks so striking even though it's just a brown is because it's not. It's actually a nice transition on the coat from this black to this lighter brown which is not so noticeable, but it still catches the eye, it still creates visual interest on the model. But having fallen into this trap, now I'm faced with a choice. What do I do? Because I already painted a lot of the details and I don't have this nice transition, so I just could leave it like this. Or I could go back and repaint the whole thing. I could do a wet blend from black to brown, or I could use a shade to darken up the top and then lighten uh, with something else the bottom. Or I could do something a little bit more terrifying and something a little bit more original, I guess, which is what I did and used an airbrush. And I know it's cheating, but you know, I've actually grown a little bit as a painter over the years and I think it's fair for me to use some of my new tools in my arsenal to enhance my painting a little bit. So what I did here is I used a very, very thin down brown color, which is lighter than the original mid-tone of the coat, and I just glazed it in with the airbrush with some very, very thin coats. 
and once I was satisfied with the lightness of the bottom, I used a very, very thin down blackish color, which is smoke black from Make Interactive, to then glaze in the, the top half of the coat, paying attention not to hit uh, some of the other elements. If you use a low pressure, very thin down paint, and you know where you are aiming with your airbrush, it's relatively simple to, to hit even these tiny elements, so it's nothing magical about it, it's not so difficult as it seems. And you could, of course, just use a brush for this as well. You could just glaze in the lighter brown color and then glaze in the darker black color as well on the top. It would just take a lot more time and I wanted to do this guy in a single sitting, basically, in an afternoon. But the end result, I think, is pretty nice. It's actually close to what you see on the box art. Maybe not as nice as that one, but still. Uh, it's a nice transition from black to uh, lighter brown, which I will then enhance with further highlights later on. And now having established all the shadows and the mid-tones, which is basically our meat and potatoes, now we can go to the sews, which is going to be our edge highlights. And this is really the defining factor of the heavy metal painting style, having really nice, clean and neat edge highlights. And this was always the part which terrified me, especially in the past when I started out. But it still does a little bit, I suppose, because it's not exactly easy. And it's, it's an interesting combination of hitting the right consistency of the paint being very neat with your brush, having the right amount of pressure on the model and holding it at the right angle as well. So if I would once again give myself a couple of pointers, it would be one, uh, don't be afraid to turn the model so that it suits you because sometimes it's super easy to hit an edge from a certain angle. Use the side of the brush as much as you can, but occasionally don't be frightened to just freehand it basically if you have the dexterity for it. And once again, don't thin your paint too much, because if you want to have a neat edge highlight, especially with the side of the brush, you need some paint on it and it needs to have a, a consistency where it covers. And finally, just take your time, because seriously, this is the biggest enemy of edge highlights when someone tries to rush it, because you're like, oh, I'm terrified of this, I have to be finished with it as fast as possible, and then, of course, you mess it up. And this is still a mindset that I have to remind myself not to have, you just need to take your time with edge highlights. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, a straight line is not always what you are going for. And you will probably see me do this a couple of times. You don't have to have a perfect line every single time. right? Depending on the edge, especially when the edge is kind of already in, in the shadow, it's probably better if you have, like, let's say, a dotted line. Some of the edges of the coat are perfect examples for this because... This is leather, right? It's it's supposed to be a little bit banked up and none of the edges would be exactly perfectly in line, right? It would have little notches, it would have little imperfections and you kind of have to represent this a little bit as well. You can also do little scratches and dots here and there on the material itself, which you probably also see me do here, um, which also contribute to this effect. But if you do that and then you have perfectly straight edge highlights everywhere, it's going to look a little bit unnatural. So once you are done with the first edge highlights, it's time to go on to the next ones. And um, here you can think about this in terms of once again, citadel colors where you go from the first layer paint to the next one, which is a brighter color. But my advice here would be to go a little bit against the traditional videos that you have shown from let's say the, the official Warhammer channel, where they show you a really thick edge highlight first with the darker color, and then they draw an even thinner line within that with the, the brighter color. Instead, what I would suggest is to simply not use the brighter color everywhere. So instead of having a thick line everywhere and then having a thin line in that thick line everywhere as well, just have almost the same kind of width uh, for your edge highlights, but then with the brighter color only cover the edges and you can almost fully cover them as well. Um, which are more towards the light and just leave that one color in the shadows or the areas which are not supposed to be as bright. You can see me cheat here as well once again because I'm going a little bit more overboard with my, my highlights than what the traditional heavy metal style would allow or would require you to do. But I just couldn't help myself and I applied a little bit more weathering and kind of highlighting on these edges of the cloak. It just looks better to me but you can obviously leave this out. And just like before, I use the same kind of method for all the different other objects and little trinkets on the model as well. So let's just look at the montage of how I actually did it. Mm -hmm. 
for the metallics, what I did is I used simply the, the same metals I used originally as the highlight color this time because the shades just made everything darker. So even the normal gold and the gun metal served me as highlight colors for the edges at first. And then because I didn't have any specific highlight colors in that range, um, I just used aluminum uh, and just mixed it in with both gold and then the gun metal to make a brighter version of that metal and then use that as the final edge highlight. I remember that this specific stage also used to cause me a lot of issues because I tended to have too much paint on my brush and got it into the crevices and kind of obscured all the shading that I already did before. So here the trick is really just to control how much paint there is on your brush. So if you guys are still having trouble with this, the trick is very simple. Remove most of the paint on a paper towel and don't water down your paint. When it comes to true metallics, you just should not add water to these paints. You can either get it out of the pot straight or you can get it from the palette straight, but just don't try to thin it down. And of course, go slowly and be careful. And just remember, this is a miniature, right? You, you cannot really rush it because it's tiny. And here's the final result. It was a lot of fun to paint and I think it turned out pretty well. So if you guys enjoyed this style, please let me know and I can paint some similar miniatures in the future as well. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. See you in the next one.